Well, it's that time again to call out Spectrum News New York 1. And uh, what else is there to say about this TV station? There was a lot of crime on the subways in the past couple of days that I am trying to organize for this video today. And a viewer of mine was telling me, you may need to make another video because there's a bunch of subway stabbings in Queens. And I was really going to talk about them tomorrow on Monday. But after last night, I cannot stay silent. Not after what happened last night. There were numerous stabbings reported all over the subway system. I am exactly now nine days away from returning to the subway system for the first time since the week of Christmas. Yeah, I have not been on the subway since the week of Christmas. In 2021. Okay. So I'm very concerned about my safety. When I have to use the E or F train. A Kew Gardens Union Turnpike. A week from Tuesday. And I have to go into the city. To take care of something. I can't go to Long Island. Because Long Island's a more expensive option. That I don't have right now. Unless a miracle happens. But I doubt it. <sighs> okay, so let's get into the update first regarding the situation at Long Island Jewish. So here we go. We actually have an update from Newsday, and I thought the Queen's Courier would have had an update, but if you go on to the Queen's Courier website, this is what happens. Okay, the Queen's Courier website today is not working. So thank goodness my dad is a regular subscriber of Newsday. Otherwise, uh, I think we would be screwed right now. Because the Queen's Courier, for whatever reason, is loading on my phone. Alright? And I don't know why the Queen's Courier is loading on my phone today. Which is a little bit unusual. Given the fact that, you know, this is going on. And I can't eat, I, I literally have to go onto another website to find that story that happened at uh, Cardozo the other day, which we're going to get to as well. This Channel 7 did cover that. So let's get to the urgent update regarding what happened at Long Island Jewish a couple days ago. So, according to Newsday, an East Rockaway man was charged Thursday after prosecutor said he pulled out a gun and threatened to kill his estranged wife while she was holding their young children at Cohen's Children's. Officer says Thomas Saxton, whose child was hospitalized, was arguing with his wife inside the hospital. Officials called 911 just after noon Thursday. Okay, one hospital officials. Okay. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, why would they call 911? They're supposed to call the secret extension to notify security first. Why would they call 911? That's very suspicious, but anyhow, police said several witnesses heard them threatening to kill his wife. Prince prosecutor said Saxton threatened his wife and she held their two-year-old child in her arms as part of the allegations listed in a 14-count criminal complaint. According to Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz's office, Saxton allegedly said that he would kill her in front of all the people there. Prosecutor said Mr. Saxton walked out of the 76th Avenue Medical Facility in the Queens side of the hospital and then called his wife and threatened her again, stating that he would kill her in her sleep. Police found Saxton's car outside of the hospital and confronted him, at which point he dropped a loaded magazine, prosecutor said. Police searched him and found two loaded handguns known as ghost guns that were untraceable by police. He was also found with a bag of cocaine in his wallet, prosecutor said. Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz also said, this defendant allegedly threatened to shoot his wife in a hospital that specializes in treating children. This potentially deadly threat was made all the more frightening when police found illegal and untraceable firearms on the defendant. Police went to a house in East Rockaway where Mr. Saxton lived after a search warrant was issued by Nassau County Police where they said they recovered a catch of firearms, ammo, magazines, and ballistic vests. Saxton was charged with criminal weapons possession, criminal possession of ammunition, two counts of menacing, two counts of illegal possession of a controlled substance, unlawful possession of marijuana, two counts of harassment, and of course, the most important serious one, endangering the welfare of a child, 
Also, as I mentioned a couple days ago, Mr. Saxton was also issued a trespassing warrant, meaning he is not allowed to enter the premises of Long Island Jewish. And I actually have an update regarding that. Northwell Health, I actually found out from an inside source who knows Mike Dowling, the CEO of Northwell, Mr. Saxton is banned from also entering any other Northwell Health facility. Yes, I actually found this out from an inside source who is close to, um, again, Mike Dowling, the CEO and president of Northwell Health. Meaning, let's say he goes to um, North Shore in Manhattan. He's arrested right on the spot. So I'm very glad Mr. Dowling, the CEO of Northwell, is taking this very, very seriously because... Uh, this is what they should be mentioning, but they don't because the media is just too afraid to give more detailed information like I have. Okay, Mr. Saxton was arraigned in Queens Criminal Court in Kew Gardens where he was hoarded, held without bail. Are you kidding me? This guy should be in Rikers. What are they doing? Unbelievable. His defense attorney with Queen's Eagle A could not be reached for comment yesterday. So he is scheduled to um, go back to court at a later date from what 1010 Wins said. So I want to see if 1010 Wins has more details. Let's see. 1010 Wins Saxton. Thankfully, we can look up his last name. Because think about it, you can just Google this guy's name and he literally comes up. I mean, this guy should literally be in Rackers Island right now. Okay. Coins. I want to see if they have a later court date for this guy. Oh, yeah, I can't find it anywhere. Let's see. So it looks like I'm not really going to have an update. I mean, this is ridiculous. <sighs> but again, this is what I mean. You know, everyone's just afraid to speak up and, and talk about the truth. Well, I'm not afraid to speak up, okay? And I said, I'm really glad. All right, let, let's show Mike Dowling's picture. Here we go. Here he is. Alright. So this is Mike Dowling's picture. It'll even come up. Alright. I want to thank this man for banning the suspect from entering any Northwell hospital. Because this is a big deal. Alright. He can go into North Shore or Lenox Hill or Syosset or Huntington. Any other Northwell facility. Alright? That's how serious they're taking this. Right? You can't go in to any Northwell facility at all or any hospital and show a gun. You can't do that, bud. You can't. So I'm glad this guy is taking this very, very seriously. And again, maybe this is a sign that maybe we're going to have more people speaking up against bail reform. Because now with the bail reform law... This guy could just walk out and go back into the same hospital for revenge. It's very possible. So trust me, security, Long Island Jewish, North Shore, any other hospital, I'm telling you right now, they're going to have it secured like Fort Knox. It's going to happen. It's going to be like the military in there. All right? It's going to be like a military state when there's war going on. That's how serious they're going to take this. This guy is danger. And he needs to be in jail. But he's not. Right? This, this guy, Mr. Saxton, he needs to be in jail for longer than 15 years. Why are they only giving him a 15-year sentence? This guy threatened... A child, and he threatened thousands of people in that hospital. 
Alright, so let's get to the main priority next. Here we go. Multiple subway stabbings rocked the subway system with less than 24 hours. This happened overnight. So, obviously we know about the subway plan that Mayor Eric Adams is supposedly saying, this is going to save our subways. Not really. Nope, it won't. Here we go. So let's get into a timeline of events. So, first incident. Flanchley and Avenue in Three Line in East New York, Brooklyn. Someone punched a 20-year-old woman in the back on, in the Manhattan-bound platform Saturday, February 19th at 2.50 p.m. The two then got into an argument and the rogue pulled out a blade and stabbed her in the stomach three times. Paramedics brought the victim to a nearby hospital in stable condition. Police released an image captured on surveillance cameras of the man they believed to be the suspect in the case. Later that day, uptown on Washington Heights, 24-year-old man was leaving the 168th Street station of the AC in one lines at 8.30 p.m. when two teenagers jumped him and tried to rob him. One of them pulled out a box cutter and stabbed him in the leg but then fled without taking anything from him. His wound was only a small puncture and he refused medical treatment at the scene. A half an hour later at 9 p.m., a 31-year-old man was running on a southbound 1 train in nearby Morningside Heights and got into an argument with a man and the woman because the lad latter was smoking. The man of the pair stabbed him with a knife in the left forearm and they escaped off the train at the 116th subway station. The victim was brought later to St. Luke's Hospital and is expected to survive according to a police spokesman. The incidents follow a brutal assault of an unhoused man at the Jamaica Van Wick station on the EJ lines in the early hours of Saturday morning just at 3 a.m. Adrio Abruch tried to rob the 46-year-old victim and stabbed him several times before fleeing. So... So wait a minute, where's the... Right, I already read the 168th Street one. So, again, this is what's going on. I mean, this is disturbing. And then, another incident happened at Briarwood, if I can find that one. Yeah, here we go. This is the one I'm looking for. Briarwood. Here's Channel 7. Example tonight of the violence we've been seeing in the subways, a slashing in Queens. Police say a man was attacked at the Briarwood station. He was rushed to the hospital with a knife wound to his arm. The incident took place during the evening rush hour. At this point, no motive for the attack and no arrests. See what I mean? This is a station away from Kew Gardens Union Turnpike, all right? You have hundreds of thousands of, well, let's just say hundreds. I get an accurate number. Okay. Hundreds of workers who take the Q46 daily to use the Q Garden Union Turnpike subway station. This is a station away from Q Garden Union Turnpike. And you want to know how more disturbing this is? Here's where it really gets more disturbing. You can find it. Where is it? I'll look it up. Right here. This is the headquarters of NYPD Transit District 20. I mean, how are you supposed to feel safe knowing that the police can't even patrol the main platform of where Transit District 20 is? I mean, this is ridiculous. And you want to talk about disturbing stuff even more. The media has been having a frenzy over this four-year-old boy that got attacked in Times Square a couple days ago. So let's watch in it's the papers the from papers on Channel this? 1. Let's and watch. begin with the Daily News. You can see their front page here. It says, too many die like this. Uh, it's a story about 63-year-old Audrey Loomer, who was found dead earlier this month on a subway platform in Long Island City. She used to live in Queens on Utopia Parkway, and her family says she hoarded cats and ran her own travel agency until the business shuttered. That's when it seems like things took a turn for the worse. But she was evicted, and after moving back in with her father two years later, he decided to spend his golden years in Florida with his new girlfriend. Uh, Loomer's family said she refused to get the, the mental health help that she needed and at one point harassing her brother and turned to a life on the streets. 
the city's new correction commissioner, Louis Molina, raising concerns after ousting key All right, so let's fast forward. Where's that story about the kid that was assaulted? Oh, and then look at this. The Daily News is not blaming bail reform on what happened to Christina Lee. Well, let's read this. Actually, no, let's watch this. Let me go around here. A closer look in the Daily News at how Asamad Nash duck jail and bail before stabbing Christina Yuna Lee tragically to death. A review of his record, though, shows bail reform laws and progressive policies did not factor into his freedom. What the news says remains unclear is why three judges, prosecutors under both former DA Cy Vance and successor Bragg, and Nash's legal aid attorneys never recommended him for mental health services or for a psych exam, or if the Manhattan judges who saw him in courtrooms before the killing were made aware of his... Um, do you not realize Bo de Blasio cut the funding for mental health? His extensive New Jersey criminal history with at least 18 priors across the Hudson. It's such a big issue now. We're wondering why some time. Yeah, and I'm going to blame New Jersey now. This guy should have gotten treatment in New Jersey. That's what happens with these progressive policies. It's like they don't care. They don't care that you need help. They don't care that you're not getting treated and you're allowed to commit more crimes. Times these people go out in the streets instead of getting the uh, help. The services they need. Uh, let's go to the post. Here's a front page. The paper leading with a story about a Bronx mother who quickly sprung into action to protect her young son. That is a Rafael Here we Rivera go. and her four-year-old son, Angel. Rivera says she did not hesitate when Angel was randomly sucker punched by a complete stranger. This happened in Times Square last week. Rivera chased down that man who punched her son, grabbed him from behind, and then refused to let him go until police arrived. Police did arrest Babakar Maibe. He now faces several charges, including assault. Police say that he had 51 prior arrests. Rivera says, Mama Bear, the Mama Bear in me came out. I did what any mama would do. Yeah, my PD. There you go. Says, Michaela Kennedy Cuomo is selling vulva paintings and crystal... Oh, oh who cares about the Cuomos? Who cares? Right, who cares? <sighs> really? This is what ev this is what everyone's addicted to. Meanwhile, Channel Seven spends how long on the subway stabbings? The the subway two morning, minutes. We are two, two minutes. minutes. On the morning broadcast this Adams morning. To tackle the issue with a multi-pronged approach that launches officially tomorrow. I would just news reporter. You cannot make this stuff up. I know Channel Seven also covered the boy that was sucker punched. Okay, so let's just go to NBC New York, because they actually spent three minutes covering it yesterday. Yeah, here it is. The other big story that we're following tonight, a random attack on a four-year-old boy in broad daylight in the heart of the city. The suspect, a man who's been arrested at least 40 times before. News force Jessica Cunnington. Only inside their home here to just talk about what happened to them. With two this is what I wanted to show you. This guy. 50 prior arrests? How the hell does he get let out? Again, it's no cash bail. Bottom line, that's what's going on here. If you don't realize that the no cash bail laws are a threat to public safety, then I don't know what to tell you. Think about what happened. When it first started in 2020. Look where we are now. We're in an anarchy state right now. I'm sorry to panic everyone, but that, that's the way things have become. And, and it's only a matter of time before Lee Selden or Andrew Giuliani become our governor. It's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. See if we can find the, uh, we can find it. Let's see, channel. Oh, 
Hopefully I can find it. There is a way I can find it. Because Lee Selden's been actually pretty busy with commercials lately. That's a given. Alright, so there's a way I can find it. Should be able to. Oh, it's on Facebook. Okay. Should be on Facebook. We'll definitely be able to find it. Because I, I need to show you what's really going on here. Okay. That Let's get to the video section. and We might be able to find it. Here it is. This is the ad. In New York, should you... Some say New York should just turn out the lights. Endless corruption, liberal crime policies, unaffordable living, people heading for the exits. But not Lee Zeldin, former 82nd Airborne, so surrendering's not in his blood. A fighter who's won seven tough elections, dedicated family man, and a tax-fighting trusted conservative. It's time to save our state. It's time for Lee Zeldin. And trust me when I say this, if I am in New York in the fall, believe me, Lee Zeldin or Andrew Giuliani is going to get my vote because we cannot trust these Democrats. What, you think, you think Tom Swazi is going to be, you know, oh, I believe in common sense. Now, all right, we know how it works. The radical left is going to hypnotize him. They're going to tell him to not repeal the bail reform and he's going to bow down to... People like Carl Hasty or Andrea Stewart Cousins. No, no, there's going to be a red wave. If this continues, either him or Andrew Giuliani are going to be the governor. That's how things are going to work out right now. Because people are going to see that this is enough. The crime has got to stop. How could this happen to the economic engine of the country? New York, everything leaves and comes from New York. You can't not have the economic engine of the country just going to decay. You can't. Everything's based about New York. Anyhow. There was another serious story. Uh, Channel 7 did cover this, but I'm going to read the New York... Um, the New York Post article. Unless the Queen's Courier is finally going to budge. Oh, finally! The Queen's Courier budges. Good. Here we go. Finally. For once when I need the Queen's Courier to work, it actually does. Here we go. Bayside High School teacher arrested and charged after attacking student. Here we go. A gym teacher at Benjamin Cardozo High School in Bayside was arrested and charged with harassment and endangering the welfare of a child. Um... After slamming a 14-year-old student against the wall and wrestling him to the ground. According to the police, the incident occurred on February 16th at 11.15 in the morning when 58-year-old Colin McNally got into a confrontation with the team who had just finished playing basketball. According to the reports, the boy was walking out of the gym with the basketball and McNally took the ball and was heading to the dean's office. Video obtained by WABC-TV shows McNally wearing shorts taking the basketball from the student. When the boy attempted to take the back the basketball, McNally grabbed him by the shirt and most of them to the ground. He then slammed the boy against the wall as students looked on. So, yeah, okay, the boy was only 14. Wow. So, the Department of Education uh, has been notified about this. Uh, NYPD 111 Precincts looking into it. Uh, Nanenthal Slider, a spokesperson for the DOE, said... These are incredibly disturbing allegations. Mr. McNally was immediately removed from the classroom away from students pending the outcome of an investigation. So, obviously, we know what's going on here. I mean, how much more blatant see can you get? Bottom line. Oh, and then the Kew Gardens. Let me read this one. Oh, okay, okay. This is different. This is what we just read. Okay. I'm like, don't get me worried that something happened at Union Turnpike. I mean, 
That's the last thing I need to read about right now. Alright, so nothing really going on in the Courier. But I needed the Courier because that's how I found out also from Channel 7 about, you know, what happened. But Yeah, we're going to read a couple more before we have to wrap up this video. So let me just click on this one. Oh, and then there was a supermarket stabbing. Two alarm house fire in Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, we're going to read that one first. Seriously, Channel 1, they should have covered this. Residents suffered serious injuries after a two alarm fire in a Brooklyn home early Saturday morning. The FDMI reported that the inferno broke out at 2.10 a.m. on February 19th in a two-story home at 79 Ashford Street. Upon arriving at the scene, firefighters encountered heavy smoke and fire which quickly spread throughout the entire structure. As they searched the residence, they came across the burn victim who suffered from smoke inhalation. EMS rushed him to a nearby hospital for treatment. The fire was brought under control at about 3.15 in the morning. Fire marshals are now looking into what caused the blaze. So... Uh, obviously, we know what's going on here. I mean, that's the blatant proof of what... Sh it's just disgusting. Just disgusting. So let me look into this. Because I'm only saying disgusting. Because Channel 1, uh, they're, they're just putting us off again as usual. So let me Google the address and then we'll pull it up on the map. So this is the, um, this is where it happened, and this is what the house looked like before the fire, and it looked like a decent house. The next door, it looked like they were working on something. Yeah, here's a more normal looking picture from 2011. Yeah. Oh, it looked like the house was under construction, but in 2019, it looked like it was in better shape. Mm. So next up, we are going to read this. Devil stabbing at Brooklyn supermarket leaves a teenager injured. So we're going to stay in Brooklyn and for this one and the next one. Two teenagers were stabbed during a brawl outside of a Brooklyn supermarket on Friday, February 18th. Police sources said detectives are getting little cooperation from the victims of the pursuit of the suspects responsible for the attack, which happened at 3.25 p.m. on February 18th outside the Key Food at the corner of Ralph Avenue in Glenwood Road in Canarsie, just around the corner from South Shore High School. Oh, yeah, Channel 7 definitely covered this because they actually did have a reporter on the scene. 63rd Precinct was involved. 911 call about an assault found a 17-year-old man stabbed in the head. EMS rushed him to Brookdale University Hospital in critical condition. My threatening injuries, but was later upgraded to stable. So at least the victim's going to be okay. Cops also found a second male stabbed in the chest who refused to cooperate with police. Paramedics also brought him to Brookdale Hospital for treatment, which was considered non-life-threatening. At this point, police have yet to ascertain a motive for the attack or the circumstances leading to the stabbing. No arrest. Ongoing investigations. So there you go. I mean, another incident that uh, Channel 1 just doesn't really want to cover. Hang on. Where's the, where's the other one in Brooklyn? Here's the one in Brooklyn. Violent Brooklyn home invasion leaves man tied up and shot in the leg. So where did this happen? Sheepshead Bay. Are you kidding me? NYPD released security camera images outside the trio responsible for the robbery and the shooting. 2 p.m. on February 19th inside one Brooklyn Bay condominiums at 1501 Forhe Street. And obviously, when I read Sheepshead Bay... That is because my cousin-in-law's mother is from Sheepshead, what was from Sheepshead Bay before her death a long time ago. So you know I'm going to take this personally. 
According to law enforcement sources, the 39-year-old male victim answered his front door after hearing a woman state that he did not pay his monthly dues. When the man opened the door, police said two male suspects forced their way inside to display firearms and demand the victim's property. Authorities said that led to a brief physical struggle during which one of the invaders opened fire, striking the man in the left leg. Upon wounding the man, police report the suspects bound the victim's wrists with zip ties that rifled through the apartment, $1,600 for the property, including a Rolex watch, an iPhone 12, numerous credit cards. They then fled the scene a short time later to parts unknown. So... Incident was reported to 61st Precinct. EMS rushed the victim to Langone Hospital, Brooklyn, where he is listed in stable condition. So here we go. Suspect descriptions. Police are looking for a female suspect, five foot seven, medium complexion, five feet seven inches, five feet seven inches tall, blue denim jacket, black shirt, blue jeans, and black and white shoes. The two male suspects were both described as 30 years old with dark complexions and medium build. Both about 6 feet and weighing about 200 pounds. So the first suspect wore a black cap, black face mask, black jacket, blue pants, black sneakers, night baseball cap, black stun glasses, a green jacket, and tan pants. So. <sighs> then we're going to read this last one. Five bullets to the back in a deadly shooting in the Bronx. Happened in the Cortona section, 3.17 p.m. yesterday afternoon. So, I didn't see anything on Channel 7 or Channel 4 about this last night. Sadly, this was reported later on as a homicide. The victim was taken to St. Barnabas Hospital. So, very disturbing. Five shots. So again, same old Channel 1. They just don't want to be bothered covering any of this. And, you know, they are up to what they want to do. Which, again, we have to keep calling out this TV station. Because they are just like uh, News 12 South Shore in Long Island. You know, they, they only have a certain agenda, it seems. And we have to keep talking about it. We have to stay the spectrum. We're paying for your news channel. And the last thing we need is for you to, oh, we're not going to cover this. We're not going to cover that. Like, no, you have to start covering the news. Because you are full of it, Channel One. You are really full of it. So that's it. Thank you for watching.